Welcome back, and Tim Alexander's on regularly. He's our geopolitical and military strategic and equipment analyst, uh, a history professor teaching in uh, Purdue University in Indiana. Uh, uh, not Tim, Purdue. <laughs> uh, I'd be, are, I'd be uh, Purdue, wrong, Purdue. wrong school, but okay, that's all right. <laughs> Wait, what, what's the name school. of the school again? Uh, Ivy Tech. Yeah, it's, Ivy it's, Tech, uh, okay. it's uh, the largest uh, group of uh, colleges in the state of Indiana. Right. So let's get into some of the news. And again, I'm not a negative person. I say, you know, if but if you don't, you should you should be honest with yourself. You have no faith and you have no hope because things are if you face the truth and the reality of the geopolitical situation, say in Kiev, the situation around the banks around the world, like these swan diving bankers. And you remember now, do you know what a what a group of do you know what a group of crows is called, uh, Tim? Uh, uh, let's see, uh, a kill, isn't it, or something like that? Uh, uh, a murder. You're, you're very close. You're very close. It's, that's right. You're right. It's a murder. Yeah, so what right. we have is actually it describes these these people were foster sized. You know, just like during uh, the Clinton era. And the, you can tell that when the mainstream media and I had an interesting discussion with my wife because I've been telling her there's a bank holiday coming for about two years. I didn't know when it was going to happen, but I knew this year it's going to happen. <clears throat> and every, all the signs now with the interest rates rising in the third world. And the roller drop is saying that they're going to send a NATO United Nations force into uh, Kiev. They're also talking about if they Europeanize uh, Ukraine, they're going to put the strategic first strike missiles to hit the launch phase of, of Russian nuclear missiles across the border. Uh, they're trying to surround uh, Russia. And, of course, Russia has militarized and advanced their strategic rocket forces and the advanced uh, warplane aircraft that China is building. They're all Russian designs. What well, we're the seeing Russians is the have the Alexander or Alexander missile system, which is specifically <clears throat> designed to take out those uh, missile systems that you were talking about. It uh, flies in right. about Mach 7 or Mach 8. You can't stop it. And it right. has a nuclear warhead. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, if I was going to put, change the name of Russia, I would call it the nation of Nyet. No. And in fact, right now in the world, in Russia, Putin is now considered almost like St. Paul. He's considered like literally a living saint. Uh, if we actually hear the comments against the fallen nation of America, how we are lost our soul. And this is the kind of Hitlery Clinton. I consider the most evil person that ever lived that I've met personally. She made the statement that Putin had no soul. And he said, well, he assumed that she should have a head. <laughs> and uh, we have a person that when I met her personally, because uh, I can say I have second sight. Okay, I know I'm not going to. Although I'm a doctor and a scientist, I have spiritual giftings God's given me, and I can tell you when I met this woman, I felt I was entering a spiritual black hole. And when I saw her, and I call the second sight or the parallel spiritual dimension, I didn't see a five foot four or five diminutive stone cold face robot in a pink pantsuit. I saw a sixteen foot Draco reptilian monstrosity. This woman is, when you hear her in these different YouTube clips, she cackles like the Wicked Witch of the West. I mean, it really is scary. Well, and she, she is cackles a witch. when Wilmar Gaddafi gets a. <clears throat> right, she is a high level. Her family, the Rodhams, have been doing human sacrifice, sex magic rituals, and drinking blood and eating flesh for perhaps thousands of years. Her people are Sabbatay and Satanists. Uh, uh, they have to understand exactly where they're coming from. Before we, we, we have a break, we need to cover some of these breaking stories because I, I want to tell you, it's getting uh, it, very yeah. hot. Uh, the Ukrainian truce, which lasted a few hours, uh, has collapsed. Uh, the protesters are now using sniper rifles as well as other firearms, firebombs, and dangerous weapons. Uh, there are various estimates for the number of people that have been killed this week, uh, 67, uh, well over 70. Uh, there's about uh, almost 70 uh, police officers that are being held by the rioters. Uh, when you're using sniper rifle, uh, rifles and pistols and other uh, shotguns and firebombs, you're no longer rioting. You're, that's an insurrection. That's a, a, a form of civil war. Yeah, to, to, uh, to, now, the EU to, has... To, I want to sort of I want to frame a I want to frame a a statement that shows how dramatic this is. Remember Fast and Furious with our so-called uh, Department of Justice head, you know, this criminal that's actually the head of DOJ. Right. And they had yeah. Fast and Furious. We should call this faster and more furious. How's that? 
Well, yeah, the that's West good, is shipping but guns. I'll tell you what. Here's here's the bottom line. The Ukraine was part of the Russian Empire and the Soviet Union for over half a millennium. Now, if someone, right. uh, if, if for some reason uh, Texas said, well, okay, well, we're independent, and then China came in and uh, moved, uh, you know, troops in and tried to take it over, what would what would we do? Well, I'll guarantee you what we'd do. We'd go to war. And I mean war if it meant World War Three, if it meant nukes. What other we do, we'd do it. And uh, we, we'd do what other we had right. to do. This is Russia's backyard. This is a matter of vital national interest for Russia. Vital national interest. Those are code words, which means war if you cross this line. And we are crossing the right. line. And they have been saying for some time now that, uh, you know, that this is nothing but a Western-inspired attempt, attempted coup. And under the, uh, Bel- I believe it's the Belgrade agreements, uh, or no, Budapest agreements, uh, with Fran- with the United Kingdom, with the United States, uh, Russia, and Ukraine, Russia has the right to intervene militarily uh, if the Ukraine is threatened, and they consider this threatened. The, Dem- the, the president of Ukraine and the government were democratically elected. Now, we have spent five billion U.S. tax dollars to create this mayhem. Many of these uh, writers are getting checks every week. That's five billion of our dollars, oh, and we've paid. had a hundred million dollars. people out of work. Right, they're getting fifty dollars a day is what I heard from the American government, which is a hell plus of a lot all of money the armaments and satellite Europe. phones they need. Yeah, well, that's a right. lot and, of money. And also in all the weapons. Yeah. Right, and all the weapons they need, including sat phones to communicate. <laughs> I, I, I've spent some time more than once in, in Eastern Europe. I want to tell you, uh, yeah, that's a lot of money for people, particularly uh, with the economy. And, uh, yeah, they, 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 the American, Israeli, uh, and other uh, Western agents are there controlling things. They've been set this up. Uh, they've been running it out of the American embassy. This is insanity. And it literally meets the definition of insanity because it is driving us to the Third World War. Well, you have people, uh, some of these neocons and the Zionists are so demonically driven, they have lost all proper sense of perspective. Who in the hell would want to start the Third World War? I mean, you have to be nuts. And the point is that they are nuts. Or, they're clinically or insane. They're for Satan. Well, they're... they're, they're well, they're, I, I, they I are, like to go are, even are, beyond that. They're, 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 they're basically suicidal. Spiritual suicide because they don't have a relationship with the Creator God and love of themselves or their fellow but man. But they do have a uh, relationship they don't love any future generations with of... Satan. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, they're sock puppets for Satan is what they should have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sock uh, puppets for Satan. Uh, you know, uh, this is... Uh, I, 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 I don't... You know... Uh, you're, you're almost speechless. Yeah, it is. Uh, the EU Observer, as I said, uh, along a mouthpiece for the uh, uh, the globalist, uh, they have uh, said today uh, that the EU ministers should be discussing peacekeepers for the Ukraine immediately. Now, that's the call for an armed invasion of the Ukraine by EU and NATO. That's what peacekeepers mean. Uh, and the Ukrainian government will not allow them in, and Russia will not allow them in, and we are getting close to a major land war in Europe, and this is not going to be uh, the little uh, spat over Yugoslavia which killed thousands of people. This will be a major war. This is the war that's long been anticipated, and we're on the edge of it. Amazing. Back in a moment with more analysis by Tim. If you aren't praying face down, if you aren't analyzing the facts, if you aren't getting your finances ready for a bank holiday, if you're not telling your neighbor, even if you get a little spittle, God help you. God help you. Back in a moment. I shared a, a little vision that I had, and I have these periodically, and I'm going to start putting up more of them. In the past, I'd stopped 
back in 1999 when I traveled with the Prophecy Club is people really weren't ready for uh, having a prophetic word. And I tell people, don't, I didn't set dates, and I'm not giving you a specific scenario, but I'm telling you, I have a little snippet, almost like getting a photograph from the future, or a little what we call a video clip. And this video clip was, uh, I saw this vision, a standing vision, where I was actually on the deck of a U.S. missile destroyer in the Mediterranean. Uh, it had a phalanx anti-aircraft system, Tomahawk missiles, it's, other, it's one of these special classes of U.S. military destroyer. And uh, I, the sun had just started to rise on the horizon, and I could smell the salt water, and one of the guys was up on the deck in his uniform on with his hat and everything. And he had already finished going to the mess hall. And then all of a sudden he saw across the sky this kind of flash of streak, like literally from the eastern horizon to the western, right in front of him. And all of a sudden it seemed to turn, and then it started to head straight for the ship, and you could see the radar systems lock up, and the phalanx uh, and the aircraft systems go, and they start to be activated, because they shoot out like three or 5,000 rounds of these giant bullets, literally to, to track using uh, infrared and other laser technologies. Yeah, they're so 20 millimeter uh, shells, but yes, right. they, and then very, yeah, yeah. very fast. And, 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 and very, by the way, these are, these, are, these are shielded a bit for the sound, but it's unbelievably noisy on deck if you're up there when this thing gets activated. Oh. Yeah, well, and, there, and there's there's several per ship. Go ahead. Right. So anyway, there was up on the front part of the deck, and this missile was skimming the water. It must have been no more than you know 20 meters off the water, and you know it was below what it's called radar, and it just came in and went phew, right through the right front uh, starboard part of the ship and also the backside, and you could hear people scrambling to get up from the mess hall on deck to get in the lifeboats, and then the next part of the vision I saw sailors and men and women, mainly guys. Still in their outfit, in their partial uniforms, you know, before they were fully out of the mess hall. And then looking up 20, 30, 40 feet of water, and the ship trying to pull them down to the vortex as it's going down so fast to the bottom of the Mediterranean. And a news report comes on and says, says in this news flash, 1,500 plus dead, U.S. missile destroyer goes to the bottom. Uh, this, if we continue pushing policies with Obama, this kind of news report, and again, remember, you know, I said this on Jeff Francis' show, and I said this to you, Tim. We're switchmen. We're almost like we call we're railway workers for God. <laughs> we're down there switching, and you and I are pulling like crazy on one of these switching things. And I've worked in the railway when I did my biochemistry degree back forty some years ago. And if you're a switchman and you're pulling on these switches to try to switch the track so the train doesn't go and smash into another train or go over a cliff, or in a bridge or some area of track that needs to be, you know, repaired. And, uh, and, and and we need, in order to have enough strength to pull the switch, we need prayer, and we need people to actually do something about it. Right now, what I see coming is with the current policies of America, of regime change, the current policies with arming people like, uh, you know, giving something like uh, $50 million or something per month to pay al-Qaeda terrorists to do regime change in Syria, to pay money, $50 a day plus weapons, in, uh, to change the regime in Kiev and in, in Ukraine, I see this scenario as maybe a prophetic warning to tell it's coming. Just like last well, year, I, August, I, I had panic attacks. I had panic let, attacks let me in tell our, you about pool. You, Bill, let uh, me tell you about you, uh, Dr. Bill. Let me tell you about your vision. Uh, right. That was a Burke class uh, guided missile destroyer. Uh, right. The what you saw coming in could have been a sunburn. It was probably the Onyx, which is a replacement for the sunburn. This thing is so incredibly fast. It's a sea-skimming uh, anti-shipping missile that Russia builds, uh, but a number of countries have them, including Iran. Uh, it flies just above the sea. It, it makes uh, terminal changes as it begins to get close to its target. It's designed to evade uh, the failing system and the rolling airframe anti-missile missiles. Uh, it is so fast that even if it didn't have a warhead, and it certainly has a large warhead, and in fact, can have a nuclear warhead, but even if it didn't have a warhead, it would sink uh, ships of that class just by the thermal energy of hitting it and going through. Um, right. And that appears to be exactly what happened in, in, in yeah. your vision. Right. It, it, was, it was actually a through and through injury. You can see it actually go through. And by the way, as it exited, it was so fast, it didn't explode until the other side as it was exiting the frame of the ship. Yeah, that that can happen, but the impact alone, uh, uh, when it goes through, it's 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 basically liquid metal, and right. uh, we we got to remember a ship is full of armaments, it's full of uh, fuel, and just all kind of stuff that just loves right. now, to burn. I, I wanted to change the story a bit. Last weekend it was my birthday, the fifteenth of February. Oh, happy Valentine's. birthday, belatedly. 
Yeah, and it, what happened is I went to RoboCop that night with my wife, and uh, some parts were obviously uh, predictive programming. Other parts were kind of scary, uh, you know, a, a little obscene, to be honest with you. The first part of the movie starts out, and I'll be a, you know, a, they start out with these robots uh, and these large, what I call Tyrannosaurus-like robots, speaking English and Farsi in Tehran. And it shows them actually coming up to women and men, looking into their eyes, and then doing a retinal scan and a terrorist body scan to see if they have weapons on them or anything inside their body. I mean, it verifies visual biometrics. It's actually doing it right on the screen. That's how it opened in the first 60 seconds. So we're there, okay? So people yeah, need to understand. Yeah, technology exists today. Right. So people, what they need to understand is people in Hollywood that are putting these movies together have access to DARPA information about what technologies are being built. Now, I was on the inside. I almost was recruited to work in DARPA on the Super Soldier program because I wanted to work and do research in MS in 1977 at UCLA VA Hospital. And Dr. Wallace Tortelot there, I was going to work in the World MS Tissue Repository, and the other four projects were all involved with DARPA, squid helmets to convert thoughts to onboard commands for uh, jet fighters, uh, direct brain interface microchips with platinum palladium wires to the auditory and visual cortex and the deep nuclei of the brain, including the amygdala and the rage control nucleus. How, and I can how tell many you, years ago? Uh, how many years ago was that? Seventy-seven. I was going to be starting. In, <laughs> uh, I was going to start. I was going to start in, in July of 1978, working with Dr. Torlot as his PhD. He had a custom CT scan implant or custom made for him. When CT scanners had just in a sense started, you you you, you, you in, realize that that uh, that's a lot of years, and that technology, which uh, mo a big part of it is uh, is not known to the public, has long long passed that right. level. That they you started dealt. that in nineteen. That research started in nineteen forty seven in Tavistock Institute, here in America. I'll just name a few of the places: John Hopkins, Benninger Institute, Topeka, Kansas, UC Irvine, uh, UCLA. Uh, Etc. And uh, Stanford, uh, what's called um, what's called uh, st Stanford the Research University, Stanford Research Center. Yeah. Now, what what people should understand, one of the biggest on the West Coast is UC Irvine. What people should understand is when I give them a little snippet of what I know, amplify that by a thousand. And remember, now what I'm telling you is not only from that time, I've had contacts having huge level security clearance at U.S. Space Command and others that have given me even more information. But even that is probably a tiny fraction of what's actually being done. Well, I, I've, so. I've been a consultant to three aerospace firms, leading edge, state of the art, and some of the stuff that I've been told privately uh, would scare the BGs out of you. I want to tell you. Yeah, yeah, it's really bad. And what we need to realize is our God is God. And if you're a godless person out there and you're listening to this program, you need to get down on your knees and cry out and say, Jesus, if you're there, uh, uh, I'm talking, I'm scared, come and give me some faith, give me some hope. Because let me tell you, if you don't have God and you face this reality, don't just kind of diss, diss the people giving you the news. You don't realize that what we're facing is a vast God, cosmic and galactic conspiracy of unbelievable, unimaginable evil about to crash in our heads. That is so true. Get right with God. Amazing, Tim. We need to get more reports and have you more on regularly back in a moment. And uh, Chris Harris is update, and I'll be on hour two tonight. And uh, we we have Tim back. We're trying to track down Chris Harris. I'm not sure he's got a lot of projects going on. He's been working on a number of projects. This, by the way, is not his real name. It's his radio name. He is a real nuclear safety expert. And when we talk about uh, subjects, I'm preparing a paper that I'm going to present tonight. And I'll give you a, kind of a summary of it. Uh, there's three major parts to it. The first part is the technical specs of what's happened in Fukushima and what's going to happen next. Uh, and I'll summarize that. The first thing is we had an explosion. Uh, it, it destroyed reactor number one and lost containment immediately before even the tsunami struck. We also had the, the tsunami drive water that cut off the power generators, so the reactors two and three lost containment and became basically meltdown, or China syndrome. And the third thing that happened is the cooling pool basically uh, started to list over the last three years, and we've had basically uh, 
Uh, a number of the fuel rod assembly pellets actually uh, burn through uh, and, you know, accumulate at the bottom of the pool, although it hasn't leaked yet. Uh, what's happening is it's listing, and it's likely that it's going to fall over. They've tried to remove fuel rod assemblies, and I think they've got it about 100 of the 1,500 assembly uh, bundles pulled. But the rest of them are ones that are bent, so they can't remove them. And any attempts to do them are likely to cause a pyrophoric fire. Most of the aquarium is probably around 75 feet or 25 meters below the ground. There's a direct aquifer carrying the water out to the Pacific Ocean. It's also venting in the area of burps of radiation. Reactor 1, 2, and 3 are so radioactive, no human being in their right mind or even in, out of their right mind can, can, uh, get, can get back there. Uh, the second part of the discussion will be what's likely to happen next. What's likely is a superquake hitting not only Tokyo, but not only to Fukushima, but five other reactors in northern Japan that will make the first Fukushima disaster look like a, like a, like a uh, you know, kindergarten party uh, from hell. And the third thing that's going to happen is that this is the ring of fire. It's going to release earthquakes that will head toward the Alaskan <clears throat> earthquake zone, then toward this is a subduction zone called Cascadia in Washington, Oregon, and then down toward the, uh, the major quake systems in California toward the Sea of Cortez and the Gulf of, of, uh, of uh, the Sea of Cortez. So what's happening is we're going, things are going to get a lot dicier. And, and we're, we'll get back into the history talking with Tim. He's back until we can track down Chris if we can for at least a segment to give us an update. What's happening is that we're arming the teeth out of Israel and Saudi Arabia that have basically said they're going to use bunker buster nukes on the Bashir reactor, which means if a war starts, the first thing that's going to happen is not only have we given tanker bombers, uh, but I've given our advanced bunker buster nukes to hit Fordo and the Kumis facility. It's very likely that we'll have a complete dissolution of the reactor core by nuking not only Russian technicians and scientists, but the entire reactor uh, 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 Which, as you know, Dr. Bell, is the equivalent of setting off one of the world's largest thermonuclear bombs in history. Uh, right. And so, uh, uh, with that introduction, I want to have you back. You probably cause... won't have the mushroom cloud, but you will have an incredible amount of highly lethal radiation spread all over a number of countries, stretching all the way to China. Right. Now, the other thing that I want people to understand is that this is tied to geopolitical and other issues. Uh, we have the, the uh, last year, the Obama administration and the British banks, which are teetering on, on catastrophe, and we've seen this evidence of all these bankers dying. It's because the Cyprus policy, which is bailing in, is going to happen this year. All the experts from Gerald Salenti, Joel Scouse, and everybody agrees that the world banking system is on the edge of disaster. And the first real signs of that are the, quote, the reduction in the they call the you know the quantitative easing a crazy term for printing money out of nowhere that went to the third world they're trying to raise their interest rates to prevent the flight of capital what's happening is in some countries like turkey and south africa uh, elsewhere it's up to 15 to 18 percent that means in their contracting economy they're in depression and when you have this kind of depression and when you have the onset of an ice age and radiotoxic food which by the way when it starts to hit the hundreds day mark which it did over the holidays our food's now going to start accumulating enough radiotoxins that it's going to start causing people to get acutely ill. And if they didn't block the weather systems coming from the North Pacific with that blocking high, we'd already see radiation sickness here in America. I mean acute radiation sickness. It's more subtle now, so we don't know why Grandma got a cardiac arrhythmia and died, or why she had a stroke, or why someone's immune system crashed or they got cancer. And you're going to see more and more of these reports, but if the radiation increased dramatically really quickly, what would you do when 50% of the population had nosebleeds, abdominal bloating, vertigo, nausea, vomiting, uh, and all kinds of other symptoms that we call early acute mild to moderate radiation sickness? People are going to freak, especially when they take radiation detectors to the beaches along Washington, Oregon, and California and realize, oh my God, I was lied to by the Obama administration and the oh, environmental... Well, Obama wouldn't lie. And the EPA, which is totally useless. And no, the senators like no, Feinstein no. and Biden are conspiracy theorists, aren't you, Doctor Bill? I'm a scientist that asks tough <laughs> questions. I'm like a two and a half year old now in a 62 year old body that has the wisdom to ask questions, and I'm not going to be compromised to to not continue to ask questions as to why these fools think that we're just going to believe their lies. So, Tim, take it from there because we're, we're still scrambling. And I, I have a report here from Drudge that I want to also report on. I just got in the newswire a few minutes ago. And I think people should realize what's really happening here is beyond belief. I mean, it really is beyond belief. So what, uh, take, take, uh, take, uh, I'm trying to find uh, the uh, 
uh, report your what, what are you which one are yeah, you talking over here, about? Go to go to drudgereport.com. Yeah, it's it's coming up. Uh, yeah. Which which one? Um, the, the latest in Ukraine, no. No, no, no. It oh. talks about their new, new source of radiation. A new oh, major okay. source of radiation that just happened. And by the way, my radiation detector, which I have in my bedroom, has shot up from normal background, which it has been now for a couple months, since it was real high last spring, three to four times background to five times sometimes. It shot up to twice background. So something's going on. They're not telling us there's been another major radiation release from Fukushima. Yeah. Uh, I call you these know. burps. Yeah, well, uh, if you have a major uh, uh, earthquake event or any number of things there, it can be, I mean, unbelievable. We, you have, what, five, six new uh, power plants there, three of which have gone chi China syndrome? Three, three more. There's six of them there. Plus there's the, yeah, six. the not only the cooling pool four with SP4, but they also have a common cooling pool. And uh, they're yeah, supposed seven, to checkerboard it, like the law here in America with a checkerboard. Yeah. Yeah, with a checkerboard, uh, basically open space, fuel rod assembly bubble, open space, like a checkerboard. The Japanese didn't do that. They have this thing chock-a-block full of really old, really highly radioactive fuel rods, and they're sharing these with Japan because they're basically creating nuclear uh, radi reagent-grade plutonium detonators for nuclear weapons. So what we're, they're doing is they're being getting ready, like the Umshinrikyo cult of Abe, they're getting ready to, to bring about Armageddon and the end of life so that they can bring well, their golden is, age. There is talk uh, in some quarters of uh, China, or not China, of Japan moving now towards uh, arming itself. Uh, it's been no secret for about 40 years that Japan basically has nuclear weaponry technology, and she has been storing a vast amount of uh, plutonium that can be rapidly assembled a as nuclear weapons. I mean, literally, they've got the stuff engineered, and all they have to do is assemble it. They've got uh, IRBMs that can hit China. Uh, they've got F-15s. They've got all kind of cruise missiles. Uh, they are, in effect, a major nuclear power. They simply haven't assembled the, uh, the systems, but they may be moving now towards assembling they, the systems. They, they don't do it all along. My, my source is Tell me that they my sources tell me that the Japanese have been on this for four decades. It's not something new. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Uh, it, it's even past that because they had a nuclear weapons program in the Second World War. Uh, it just wasn't as advanced as ours. And let me tell you, they would have had no compunctions about uh, nuking any American city that they could have got to. In fact, that's, that's part of the reason why, well, we were collaborating with the Japanese and Germans before the war. We made a decision to take German-made nuclear materials and nuke Japan because we knew that the Empire of the Rising Sun the way they treated our their our, their prisoners of a war and how the obscene they were, they would be no restraint whatsoever if they ever decided to nuke American cities. Oh, absolutely not. People yeah. don't know that the Japanese were collaborating us on the bomb before the war. Back in a moment. This is up on Drudge, by the way, DrudgeReport.com, and I'm going to read it off uh, just a little bit and then get back to Tim. Uh, the operator of Japanese Fukushima plant, they lost 100 metric tons, and they left a valve open when they were pumping it. That's how it happened. <laughs> Gee, that was smart. So, Tim, let's go through some more stories that you have posted up on well, your Europe Business uh, blog. Yeah, uh, but uh, this was, you, you said to, to be sure to mention this when we came back on the air. What we're seeing in the Ukraine right now is very similar to what the Rothschilds organized. And never forget that the Rothschilds are on top of this uh, power pyramid, this uh, New World Order, uh, global banking cartel, Zionist, etc., uh, uh, Neocom uh, monster. And uh, what they did against King Louis the Sixteenth and Queen Marie Antoinette of France 
was uh, there's a lot of similarities. They lied through their teeth. Uh, they lied about uh, Marie Antoinette, how much money she was spending, uh, that she said, let them eat cake and all this nonsense. Uh, they set everything up, and when the revolution came, they managed, uh, first off, none of the riots, uh, none of the rioters ever got near the Rothschild mansions. Uh, no Rothschild was ever dragged before their rump courts. No Rothschild was ever had his head roll off uh, from the guillotine. But they massacred uh, all the ruling elite of France, uh, many of the priests, etc. Uh, they desecrated the high altar at uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, etc., etc. It was very anti-Christian, anti-God, anti uh ruling elite. That's the revolution. That was the first true big revolution in human history that at least, you know, the, the post Ice Age history that we know of. And it was organized by the Rothschilds. This is what you're seeing in the Ukraine. Uh, they're just uh, waiting for something to happen. They'll call it a massacre. The uh, Europeans will lead the charge to go in to send quote, end quote, peacekeepers in. Uh, and it'll be a NATO army. And uh, I guarantee you the Russians will not stand for it. And God help us if we go down that road because that will be the beginning of the Third World War or something very close to it. Well, so what, what, I, what I suspect is going to happen is that it is so over the top now, there will be some level of a body count, death, and destruction that will frighten the world so badly that we will to accept almost any treaty to stop it. Could That's very treaty well that is, be. Could very and that well treaty be. Is, that treaty, I think, will be con- consummated this year and, or next is my theory. It's only a theory. It's not a prophecy. And I'm not setting dates, but I have a feeling... And then if it's fulfilled, it'll be in the second term of Obama. He is the only man now that can actually certify the rebuilding of the temple. So if a treaty signed, the next step is the city divided, the sacrifice started on the Temple Mount on, on Sakat, and the population removed from places where they previously had settlements. And that means that we're going to start seeing the abomination that desolates. And the only person who can ratify the rebuilding of the temple is Obama, period. That's it. That's from the scroll of Bush that was given. Texmars documented it. Uh, in January 2007 by the Sanhedrin. So we're there. And what I see happening is all the controlled demolition of the economy with the quantitative easing and now stopping it uh, or tapering back, they call it quantitative tapering, uh, the rise of interest rates in third world countries where they can't rise interest rates when they're in a recession that causes depression. All of these things are converging on a disaster that's going to strike this year. And it's like I said, I don't know if it's this year or next, but if there isn't a peace treaty, there's going to be a really big Middle Eastern war very soon, possibly this year or next. But I believe it's not going to go much larger, longer. I don't think we're going to make it to 2016 without a major Middle Eastern war. Well, that uh, that very well could be. Uh, I don't know if did we cover. Uh, I had uh, something posted on that uh, on my site. Um, uh, Russia is now saying, and they're moving uh, to uh, take the matter before the UN Security Council, but Russia is now saying that, uh, let me find it here on my, my news block. Uh, um, boy, 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 boy. Uh, Russia and France are planning a military intervention in Syria. Um, and uh, Russia is considering an uh, urgent UN Security Council meeting to stop the slide, slide towards escalation in Syria, uh, senior Russian sources uh, have said. So what they're yeah, – and you can see it. I mean, you know, we, the, uh, we, the, 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 the Syrians continue to kick the heck out of uh, the foreign uh, terrorists that have been brought in using Western and Saudi and Omani money. Uh, uh, with Western and Israeli arms, and uh, you know the people are fighting for their country, and right. these goons are coming in and and they're they're literally killing young girls in the streets. They're killing people right and left. They're kidnapping nuns, uh, orphanages. 
Uh, there's still two Orthodox archbishops that have uh, have not uh, reappeared, and an entire nunnery that was uh, also an orphanage with all the orphans, and they're still uh, being held. God help them. Uh, well, one of the things that I expect to happen on domestic soil in America, and this was told me by Special Forces agents in St. Louis when I was at an AAEM conference, American Academy of Environmental Medicine, because they were part of our organization, Delta Force and Special Ops, uh, in 1997, that's a long time ago, 17 years, that there will be a time, and I can't tell you when it'll be or when it'll happen, but it'll either be in a major sporting event or a city core in a major city like Atlanta, Chicago, L.A. of a nuke going off and killing several hundred thousand people plus, maybe half a million, and making a larger area highly radioactive and causing what's called a containment zone where they actually block people off from trying to escape. That's a fact, and I confronted the FEMA director over it. I work with these guys personally, and I can tell you, they, they want a catalyzing event. They had 9-11, the geometric progression from Oklahoma City, where I was the exit examiner of all five special op team, where they used micronukes there. They used them again in the World Trade Center Tower, and the theme is they're going to use nukes. Last year, we had the statement of the outgoing director of DHS to Department of Homeland Security Napolitano that they can't stop traffic bringing in containers of nuclear material or weapons. They're container-sized nukes across the Mexican border or through Freeport, Bahamas, or through Costco, which is a communist overseas shipping company that comes into uh, San Pedro, California. So people need to start getting a, a, a life here and realize that they want a catalyzing event that will fo fully frighten the herd of Americans so much they'll be willing to give over all their rights in biometric monitoring. Well, yeah, so it, it has to be, it has to be, uh, you know, in the six or seven figures dead, uh, because we've had 911, and now people are, a majority of the American population has woken up to the fact that this fantasy we were told about 911 was all lies, smoke, and mirrors. <clears throat> And, and just as many of the other uh, terrible shootings have been smoke and mirrors or lies, uh, as Sandy Hook and, and so forth. But now you see uh, they have to go way, way beyond 911 to really scare the living hell out of Americans. And you're right. They, yeah. they, the way to do that is, is to nuke uh, an area and create absolute total chaos. These right. people... And and, are, are, and by the way, people will then, of anything. Yeah, let me give you some hard dates. But May of this year, which is three, uh, four months away, uh, no, three months away, May of this year, we're mm -hmm. supposed to have all American workers have a biometric trackable ID. That was actually delayed from the 2009 bill that was passed in the first term of Obama, which is, by the way, ratified by both parties, that is delayed from last May of 2013 to this May. And that means that they, they want to have a trackable reason why they can make sure that the biometrics, and as I said in the opening scenes of Robocop, they had this big statement by uh, Samuel L. Jackson, who was a big media guy, trying to push for the idea, why do Americans have this, this need to not allow robots when they, we are corporations based in America, have robots everywhere, and they showed them in Tehran as the very first place they had placed them, and how people have the corporation, which is Omni, uh, Corp, basically, sounds like I mean, Spider-Man, but Omnicorp <laughs> was wanting to put these robots in America, and they were not, and they decided eventually they'd say, we'll put a human inside the robot, and we'll interface them. <laughs> so, what people should realize is predictive programming, they're getting ready. In 2006, when they finished Gulf War II, they'd started off Gulf War II with six sword operational ground-based, not airborne, ground-based operational warrior robots. At the end of 2006, they had 26,000. And they're in their warehouses they ready have, to deploy. If they have their way, Dr. Bill, they'll kill uh, about 6 billion people, and the rest of the human population will be enslaved. There'll be robotic killers on the ground, in the air, in the water, and uh, they'll kill anybody that raises their head. As the Soviets said, if the, the blade of grass that sticks up gets chopped down. That's the monsters they are. Amazing. Amazing. It's not a theory. It's happening as we speak. Thank you, Tim.